It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up L.A. Unscripted? We live in a city with endless things to do and people to meet, and we want to do it all with you. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and we're here at Bakery Silver Lake, where small plates serve up big taste. Now, here's something else you have to try. I come from six generations of ice cream makers. I'm Martin Ken, owner of Pops Artisanal Creamery, and I dare Dana to make our signature coconut sundae. We have a little bit of everything, and within that, just a mix of different cultures. And I use um, just LA's diversity, uh, uh, just like as a foundation to, to make creative flavors such as, you know, Thai tea. We have a, you know, these Thai community, like uh, street vendors, you know, we see the fresh fruits in, in the LA area. Who doesn't like, you know, the fruits and put tahini and a little bit of lime? So we, again, recreate that into ice cream. I come from six generations of ice cream makers uh, from Belize. This is literally my family's tradition. I learned how to make ice cream from my grandfather, right? Who learned from his grandfather? He taught me how to ride the bike and then I started doing all the, the stunts. So I grew up cracking coconuts, coring it, shaving it. We couldn't go out and play with my friends unless my mom was like, are you done with those coconuts? Because we did everything with coconut back in Belize from, from treats to, you know, from coconut milk or when coconut, um, cream to we make in our in our like staple foods like rice and beans things like that for me it was an, a good way to show something interesting in a coconut bowl i am ready for this coconut let's do this all right we got damon here my little brother it is a family affair he is the general manager i am shaving fresh coconut and we're going to use the shell for the sundae and then we're going to use the shavings on top <laughs> You've got your Thai tea ice cream, your rum raisin, your fresh honey lavender, your little umbrella. Who needs to travel to an island? Everything is, is done with love. I want it to be welcoming and, and um, uh, diverse, um, like our flavors. Pops is such a big part of me, and um, um, we connect with the community as many ways as possible. We just opened up our, our third location in Santa Clarita, and to have 150 people waiting outside um, to serve about 12 to 1,500 people in a weekend. Um, completely surreal. It's been six generations so far. You have two kids. Do you want to make it seven generations? The one thing is it's been all boys in the family, all the men. That's why, you know, the name Pops. I only have daughters. <laughs> so the girls are going to take it from here. From the valley to the ocean, the mountains, the desert, and everything in between, there are so many incredible enclaves to discover in Southern California. So now let's see what our Jasmine Simpkins has discovered. Everything here at Billionaire we do over the top. You don't have to be a billionaire to eat like one. Hi, my name is Jennifer Johnson, co-owner of Billionaire Burger Boys. Actually, bur burgers was an accident. We were not serving burgers in the beginning. When we first got started, Solo and David Lee um, Smokehouse, that's what people call it. Did you get that on camera? No, not the camera, yeah. Yeah, there we go. They were doing their completely separate different things. They were chefs on Instagram. One day, one of the guys got hungry and he decided to make a burger. And he took a picture of that burger and he put it on social media. And the next day, David Lee came and he made a burger. And I think we got about 1,500 likes and we knew yeah, we change your life one bite at a time. Light bulb, throw that whole menu away. We're serving burgers from this day on. Once we first started, you know, we were on social media. We were doing these crazy commercials where it looked like we were having so much fun. And at the end of the day, we were going to sleep in a motel, some of us in our car. It was definitely tough in the beginning. So to see us where we are now, we are definitely amazed. The restaurant kind of just fell in our lap. It's like what we call one of those beautiful accidents. When we first started out, it was more about um, bringing something to the restaurant that the truck didn't have. People love our honey butter wings. They love our jambalaya fries, our lobster burger. And then our original billionaire burger, it's a classic burger, so everybody loves it. 
Our billionaire burger is a classic lettuce, tomato, pickle. We got a special billy sauce, um, sauteed onions and cheese. But then we also got our BABs. You know what a BAB is? No. For our people at home, it's a big <laughs> burger. This is our billionaire lobster surf and turf that we do. Uh, it's a whole deep fried lobster tail, deep fried onion straws, cheese, and a Cajun ranch aioli. Now, Jasmine, I heard that you was vegetarian, right? Baby vegan. Baby vegan. Okay, yeah. I can dig the lifestyle change, you know what I'm saying? Well, we made you something special. This is one of our vegetarian BABs, oh, you feel me? It's a vegetarian God. burger made Billy style oh. for you. Wait a minute, uh -huh, hold on. Uh -huh. This isn't going to be pretty. Hey, somebody bring a napkin. I know they be good when I eat them and I'm a meatitarian. After all the success you guys have had with the food trucks, now you have a reality show. The concept of Burger Truck Brawl is we're pretty bad, so we can go into someone else's territory and basically call them out and, you know, just have a little fun, a little friendly competition. It's a great feeling because to be able to just throw that bone out for somebody else, somebody did it for us. So for us to be able to do that for other people and other small businesses, this is actually a blessing. And if you guys have some ideas, tell us where to go next, because by now, you guys know I am Dana down to do it all unscripted. We're the number one thing to do in LA on TripAdvisor right now. So whether you're local, out of state, out of the country even, people from internationally have this on their agenda to do. Can you tell me a little bit about Echo Park Lake? In 1890, this was a man-made reservoir. Slightly after that, they decided to build a boathouse here. You know, back in the 1900s, this was kind of where LA somewhat started. Charlie Chaplin had his first movie in this area. In the 1910s, the boathouse was completed, and that's when the population started changing, and that's when Echo Park started becoming what it is today. And the reason Echo Park got its name is the city councilman who was uh, conducting construction here could actually hear his echoes from the park against the mountains and the foothills. Back in 2017, we reintroduced the swan boats to the location, which were here 100 years ago. And since then, over the past three years, we've been serving over 150,000 customers every single year. Kids, families, couples coming out for date nights, just kind of a day out of the house. Here at Echo Park Lake, we take safety very seriously. So you've already signed your waiver. Let's go ahead and get your life jacket on and buckle. And do these swans have names? These swans have the, whatever you want to name it, you can name it. Some of the staff name them La Swan James. I want to ride in La Swan James. Right. This seems like something really safe that people can do during the pandemic. We require you come with your same household. You have to have a mask on while you're in line, but once you're out there, you can take your mask off and enjoy an hour on the water. At night, it's wonderful. Each swan boat has a LED light on it, and it illuminates the water while you're pedaling. You get to see the all the downtown LA skyline. You see the fountain. You guys, this is so much fun. It's so peaceful, and it's so great to be outdoors. But more than that, it's actually a really great workout. And I'm talking for this. Come out here and meet LaSwan James. You're going to love it. And we are just getting started. LA Unscripted from Bakery Silver Lake. We'll be right back. Welcome back to LA Unscripted from Bakery Silver Lake. I'm Dana Devon, and we want to know how you live life unscripted. I mean, what does that really mean? Well, to us, it's going outside of our comfort zones, discovering new places like this one, and meeting new people that make SoCal so special. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I walked into local fixture and it's kind of like scratch your head what is this store do you get that a lot we're kind of hybrid of general store coffee bar and a community hangout Become, you know a go-to for, for yeah. people looking for that unique gift and so that's kind of what I love about the store it's kind of like a, a discovery store you know they come in they're like whoa you know they see the products and then they see the coffee bar and smell the coffee beans and 
my girl, Patty Rodriguez, with The Little Libros. Yes, yes. Those books are probably the most popular books that we sell here. And then this has been really popular as well, the Hemlock Hats. We kind of cater to a, a broad spectrum of customers, you know, everything from uh, candles and jewelry, apothecary products to, you know, kid products, baby goods. And I see the label here, rosé and petals. I feel like there's a story behind that. There is, yeah. So that started by my sister-in-law, Dee, and oh. her friend, Melissa, during the pandemic. So yeah. a family business. Yes. It's a family business within the family within business. Within the family business. And the cards, where did those come from? I think they're so unique. And then for the guys, we have pomade and grooming products. One of my favorites is the stance socks. Most comfortable socks I'll ever wear, and we'll get really cool Dodger socks that have been super popular. Another cool product we carry, uh, Rover coolers. Sometimes people that first come will hang out here for like half hour to an hour, just kind of exploring every part of the store. Weeder Rights have just so much pride in their city, you yeah. know, so it's really cool seeing, you know, when I drop off my kids at school, you'll see somebody wearing a Whittier local shirt really? or a sweatshirt. There's a sense so. of pride with that, right? For you sure. started in Whittier where there is so much pride. You started a local fixture, a fixture within the city. Within the city. And really our goal was to become a local fixture in the community, you know, so I think now eight years in, we've kind of hit that goal. Local Here's. Fixture, shop them in person, localfixture.com, and That's also great. on social media, Local Fixture, Instagram. Instagram and TikTok. You're on TikTok now? Yeah. Jason, yep. let's go dance it out. <laughs> okay, so what else is on trend? Well, let's see what our Olivia de Bortoli is up to. One of my favorite things about Southern California is the outdoor activities. And today, I'm learning a new one. Mountain bike, it's an extreme sport, but don't be alarmed. Anyone can do it. If you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced, they have bikes for you. You can just get on your bike and just enjoy nature. And that's what I like about the sport. That is mountain biking. What makes Southern California so perfect for this sport? First of all, the weather. Now that I reside in Simi Valley, I'm taking advantage of the entire uh, mountain range. Everywhere I look, it's just a trail. So here in Simi Valley, we have all kinds of terrain. So anyone can do the sport. If it's like, well, I want to try it for the first time, just grab a bike. It doesn't have to be a $10,000 bike. It could be a bike from your local uh, sports store. Mountain biking has helped me during COVID times to stay healthy. Again, spending a lot of time at home with the family. You still need to exercise to keep up with those kids. And uh, so this is a great sport. It's free. It keeps you healthy. It gives you stamina. You're going to give me a beginner's guide to mountain biking, right? Absolutely. What is the first step? The very first step, Olivia, is size. So why don't you go ahead and take a seat okay. to make sure that is your size. You also want to make sure, which is very, very important, you want to learn how to brake. When you perform the sport of mountain biking, you always want to have control of the bike. You want to brake with these two fingers only. You always look ahead. Helmets on, let's do it. And tell me about Raw Apparel. What kind of things do you sell and what, what do you have there? If you go to rawapparel.com, you'll see that we sell sweaters, t-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, beanies. So this is for everyone who loves exercising. If you go at the very top of the website, you'll see we not only sell clothes, but we, sit, we are selling you a lifestyle. We want you to be healthy. We want you to feel good. We want you to look good. So that's how the idea was born with, with other friends that were uh, into mountain biking. I was able to just create it finally and say, why not launch it? And we have so much more for you. Going off script is far more fun than sticking to it, right? So come on back with us. to discover here in SoCal, like this place. And now, check this out. All right, so I'm here in Highland Park, California, and there's a, a garden here somewhere. I'm not sure I'm in the right place. Hi! 
Hi. Welcome to Greenstone Farm oh and Sanctuary. Oh my gosh, this is like a little secret garden. What a cool door. What are healing gardens? So healing gardens is essentially a community of these uh, private, beautiful gem gardens uh, all over LA and we are expanding nationwide. Uh, people come here uh, to do have dates in the garden, uh, have yoga, meditation in the garden. Everyone's stuck at home working, and I'm sure people get sick of looking at the same four walls all the time. So they can literally bring their laptop here, you've got Wi-Fi, right. and they can spend the whole day in nature and work. Yeah, hear all those beautiful birds around. It's very de-stressing for the eyes to look around at different textures of the garden. How in the world did you get this idea? Uh, so both uh, me and my co-founder, we were going through anxiety issues and we were fixing it by coming to gardens like these. Uh, we saw the same issue uh, happening to a lot of other people in tech. Uh, so we were like, oh, let's help other people find wellness through nature, through gardening. And that's where the idea came from. We thought it was a problem around wellness that only we faced, uh -huh. but clearly it's, you know, People love these gems. It's a problem for us when people don't want to leave these beautiful places. <laughs> this is Jasmine. She's one of our baby chickens. They call them disco chickens. I want feathers on my feet. Thank How you. did you guys get involved in Healing Gardens? We're looking for a way to offer our space to the public. And Rishi and Abi came here scouting for a gardening class. You wanted to share your garden, but yet you didn't have the means in terms of like insurance and things like that. So we now have insurance and we have the tech that makes it available for people to book the garden. And they also provide um, the ability just for us to get paid. Wow, how big is this? Uh, just under three-fourths of an acre somewhere between half an acre and three-fourths of an acre. We have many spaces that people like to go and sit. Oh my God, there's a hammock. De-stress, relax, recharge, rejuvenate, replenish, all the R's. <laughs> <laughs> and each of the gardens, as you can see, is unique. And also like every season is different in a garden. How many secret gardens do you have like this in the greater LA area? Uh, just four months ago, we started with four gardens. Uh -huh. We are up to 18 gardens now, just in the LA area. Uh, two gardens in San Diego, and we are expanding nationwide. We created this to fight climate change and to enable wellness uh, for people. Why does this help climate change? The goal is uh, to make gardeners more money. Mm -hmm. And the thought is if gardeners have more money, they will plant more trees, mm -hmm. they will grow these more beautiful gardens, we'll create an economy around it, and that will fight, fight climate change. And that's not all. Here's some more to keep you in the know. Getting picked up in the electric Volkswagen. So starts my late night arrival in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Volkswagen brought me here to test drive a new version of their top selling ID4 electric SUV. This is the brand new all wheel drive version of the ID4. It's going to go up to 249 miles on a charge, and I am among the first to drive it. Let's take it for a spin. My destination Volkswagen's new electric battery assembly plant and the factory where they'll build these cars. Early morning on the river. The fog is in the mountains. It's pretty beautiful. My drive takes me along windy roads and up and down hills on a course meant to show off the capabilities of this all-wheel drive SUV. I just love the idea of being on these country roads in one of the most high-tech electric cars you can get. The irony is fantastic. Another irony? I didn't see a single charging station along my way. One challenge contributing to range anxiety among potential EV buyers. There's a lot to like about this car. It's an SUV, so it's got a lot of room, but it's also all electric. So you feel like you're doing something good for the environment. And on top of that, it's all wheel drive. So you're not sacrificing any of the power or utility of an SUV by going electric. I made it to the halfway point with about 154 miles left on my charge, a generous number. Right now, ID4 sold in the US are made over in Germany, but next year, that all changes. They'll be made right here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Next stop, a factory tour. Volkswagen investing nearly $3 billion to build the ID4 in the States. They believe strong tax credits and new regulations will fuel already hot sales. 
the factory full of robots automating complex assembly line tasks. Once the car is nearly done, it goes here to what's called an audit box, and this is where they check the quality, make sure all the fit and finish is up to par. Seeing humans and robots work in a well-choreographed dance is a highlight of the trip. Right now, they're doing pre-production runs. Next year, this factory will be fully up and running, helping EVs go mainstream. Are you hungry yet? Let's see what Jessica Holmes is cooking up. Maybe you guys are like me, you're trying to eat healthier in the new year. And I'm, I'm gonna make a salad with kale, and same thing, kale really good for you. And just easy store-bought rotisserie chicken, or if you have some chicken you wanna throw in here, it would be good with really anything, bacon. So I'll chop up my kale, and I have two heads of kale here. Tablespoon of mustard, good pinch of salt, lemon. Let's do a half a lemon and see if that's enough. Let's do some honey. Just a drizzle of honey to add a little sweetness. So let's mix the mustard, the lemon, the honey. My handy little mandolin, which is very dangerous because it's so sharp. Celery goes in. And then to that, I'm gonna get my dressing going. And get this dress before I add everything else. Chicken. Just some leftover rotisserie chicken. When you start to smell them, just before they get dark on you. Okay. Pecans going in. And we're done. Look at that. Who wouldn't want that for dinner? Okay, that is it for now. Thank you, Bakary, for allowing us to party on your patio. We love it here. All right, where will we be next? You never know. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time.